let's uh, move on now. Question, is there a crisis today in masculinity and should the ummah, we preach this issue or is there, this is not a problem and alhamdulillah, everything is fine with, with us? No, I think it's one of the, probably one of the greatest uh, challenges facing the ummah today. Uh, may Allah reward you and all the other brothers and sisters mm -hmm. that are out there, uh, you know, uh, combating these uh, misconceptions. I mean, I, and to be very honest with you, I don't, I try to stay away from social media mostly because I'm too busy with books and stuff. But uh, I heard uh, some other clips also, mashallah, people taking this issue on, Qawamun uh, or something, and then somebody else. And the, the issue here is that the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained it's a perfect balance, right? Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows us as men, knows women, knows our nature, knows women, the nature of women, and knows how best they will work together. He's our khalif, right? He's the one that created us. So who would know better, right? Uh, all these man-made feminism and red pillism and this ism and that ism have to be rejected. Mm. We as Muslims reject all of this because uh, we as Muslims have the answer already. Just yeah. like we reject communism and socialism and this ism because these are human ideas in trying to make humans function, right? We as Muslims have the Quran with Sunnah. The problem that we're running into, and this is why I'm really glad that this is being addressed, um, is that Muslims today are going to extremes. Muslims today are falling into these isms, yeah. uh, saying things outside the Quran and Sunnah. Uh, now you have a Muslim feminist. Like, what does that mean? Right. Like, what is what is the difference between a Muslim feminist idea of Islam and me and you? If we're Muslim, we all have one idea, right? Uh, this whole uh, you know idea of of Muslim feminism doesn't make any sense because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given the woman rights that that nobody can imagine how beautiful those rights are because that's the khalq, right? And uh, we don't have time here to go deep into those, but that is what's best because the creator who created women gave those rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave men rights that are the most beautiful rights because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of men and he knows the nature, nature of men. Allah gave hukuk to both and gave responsibilities to both, knowing best our nature. Hmm. Today we have women out there trying to throw hijabs off and thinking this is liberation. Look, I'm going to be straight here again. Forgive me for some bluntness. Go for right. it. All good. this feminism, what has it done for women other than put them in danger, put them in, uh, we see the Me Too movement. I think the Me Too movement is, is a wake up call for Western women to realize that putting yourself in that environment, this is what, look, Gabriel, try to explain this. To me, okay? A woman goes to a director's hotel room at 2 a.m. Right? Again, I'm not saying it's her fault, like, don't get me wrong here, but just a question here, where is her husband? Where is her father? Where is her brother? brother? Anybody? What are you doing cousin, there at 2 a.m.? Uncle, right? And, and what exactly did she expect to be reading Bible verses with him at 2 a.m.? Right? <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, like, what was the intent? Like, hey, I'm going to go at 2 a.m. to a hotel room with a bottle of champagne so we can pray Qayyam together, um, right? <laughs> Uh, the woman that, that went to Mike Tyson's room at whatever time, and you know, what exactly was the intent there, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the nature of men and women, so khalwa has been made haram. So these kinds of interactions have been made haram. And, and, and I, uh, again, this is why uh, I'm very disappointed that, that people are not seeing the Me Too movement for what it really is, which is to show the results of this kind of feminism, right? No, no. And the harm that it has put uh, women. And, and today, and I'll tell you something, People think, oh, at least now we have it. Less women are getting hired. Less women are getting promoted after the Me Too movement because now bosses are worried about any okay. interaction mm. because they're afraid. So see, see, either way, you're going to just harm women. Instead, if we go back to the Quran and Sunnah and what Allah, the creator, has ordained, we would take care of all these problems, right? And then you have the other extreme. You have red pill and I don't, I don't even know much about it, to be honest with you. I think some people talk too much about red pills, maybe because they're popping blue pills or something. They have their own uh, <laughs> you know, issues that they're, they're dealing with. Look, we don't need any of that. We, we, we have the Quran with Sunnah. That yeah. is our pill. The Quran with Sunnah, that is our solution. These, these things of you know, going towards, you know, oh, 
women have no worth. Of course, women have worth. Allah gave them worth. Yeah. Men, have, men are useless. No, they're not. Allah gave them their place. If we want to know, right? And this is going to be my solution for all of this, right? If we want to know what is the right of woman and man and, and responsibility, go to the people of knowledge. Go to the Quran. Go to the Sahih Hadith. We're solved. No feminists, no red pillars, no male chauvinists, no, none of that stuff. We're Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We have the solution. Go to the people of knowledge. Sit with the Quran, Sahih Hadith. Solve. Now, Sheikh, what you mentioned red pill. Why do you think, and you say you're not, you didn't look into it that much, but why do you think, I think you understand what, what it means, kind of. Uh, why do you think so many young Muslim men are leaning towards red pill masculinity from a non-muslim perspective uh you know people label as toxic masculinity whatever why do you think that's that's happening though and not even going to the quran and sunnah and just kind of going for those type of uh representations and studies and so on excellent question um uh, so one thing is we have first thing uh, a, a very toxic environment in the world which by no doubt is, 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 is uh, how should I say this, um, been tipped towards a, a anti-male society, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's just a reality, right? Reality. Meaning in the sense that today, um, uh, if, if uh, you don't see uh, affirmative action for men, right? you don't see anybody saying, oh, we don't have enough men on the board of this, you know, and you could say because there's already so many, but but that's the point that it's not about just your qualifications. There's definitely a bias against men that's going on. No. And to respond to that, instead of going to the people of knowledge and looking at the Quran and saying as Muslims, we have a solution. Some young men see somebody saying things that are not popular in mainstream media, and they know that there's some truth to it. So they cling to it. And that comes out of ignorance as well, because people don't realize what Allah has already blessed us with. So this is why me and you and the brothers out there uh, yani who are trying to do da'wah need to educate our brothers and our sisters that look, our sisters, uh, and again, the number of Muslim sisters that are on YouTube talking about fem feminism way outnumbers the number of Muslim brothers mm -hmm. on there talking about, you know, whatever other non-Muslim pills that they're talking about, right? So the problem gets to be is both of them need to go back to the Quran and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. ignorance and a, a a society where they feel that they cannot make a change right mm -hmm. in society today it's very difficult and, and i live in the west i mean i can tell you to go out and say you know the woman's place is in the home right this is the best place for the woman yeah and right now i just said that uh, and I'm, I'm worried there's a lawyer behind my seat that's going to pop up in a minute right <laughs> it's all right bismillah <laughs> so, for us as, as Muslim men and as Muslim women, we need to take a stand and say, look, this is the Quran, this is a Sahih a Hadith, this is the Sunnah, this is our pill, this is our religion, this is our way. We are not feminists, we are not this, we're not that. We have that balance already. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is learn. We yeah. need to go to the people of knowledge, seek knowledge from the, in the light of the Quran and Sahih a Hadith, and then whatever we learn, Aslam, we submit to. That's yeah. it. 